We are here on the Cordillera Negra and on the opposite side of the valley we have Cordillera Blanca. And in between we have the Rio Santo Valley which separates the two mountain areas. There are two huge mountains. One is the Huascaran Norte and the other one is the Huascaran Sur, which are the highest mountains in Peru. And in 1962 and in 1970 there happened two huge landslides. So in 1962, a large piece of ice and rock broke off from the north peak of Nevado Huascaran and on its way down it had drained a large amount of ice, of snow and also of, of debris and so it developed into a large avalanche of mud, of debris, of ice, of snow uh, which traveled all the way down to the Rio Santa Valley at a distance of approximately 20 kilometers. And yeah, and it, it caused a lot of destruction on the debris fan of Ranrahirka. In 1970, on 31st of May, the same earthquake, which also destroyed the town of Huaraz, triggered another large fall of rock and ice from the north peak of Nevado Huascaran. But this time it was much larger than the event in 1962. Um, so the mud avalanche overtopped a more than 100 meter high ridge, the Cerro de Aira, and destroyed the town of Yungay on the other side of this ridge. Over its vertical distance of 4 kilometers, the mud avalanche gained a velocity of at least 300 kilometers per hour and a volume of at least 50 million cubic meters. My busyness is simulating landslides on the computer. And so I was struggling a lot with this Uascaran event of 1970 because it was quite hard to correctly simulate that overtopping of Cerro de Aira. But finally I managed and I was really happy to see that mud flow overtopping Cerro de Aira on the computer. The success of the scientist was a disaster for the people. They saw the avalanche overtopping Cerro de Aira just three minutes after the town had been badly damaged by the earthquake. At the former town of Yungay we met the woman called Senora Rosa. Only few people survived this event. She was one of them when she was only 11 years old. Lo que vi es que una masa, una masa como una ola, ¿no? Como una ola para arriba. Una o, como una ola pero inmenso para arriba y después ha empezado a bajar con chispas como candela, ¿no? Con chispas sonando todo. El ruido era Muy fuerte, 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 desesperante. Como vino una masa gruesa con hielo, barro, como ha bajado de arriba, todo en su encuentro lo ha traído arrasando todo. Y arrasando todo y esta piedra no, no ha existido. Pero después de 70 esta piedra quedó acá en la misma plaza. No sabemos exactamente donde eran las casas. O sea, ha habido 25.000 personas desaparecidas, muertas. Y casi la mayoría pues han fallecido, muy pocas, muy poquititos nos hemos salvado. No hemos llegado ni a 300, ni a 500, ni a 400 la persona, ¿no? Todito, todito fue arrasado. Quizás por el, por el terremoto o there were only two places in Yungay where people were safe. One was the, the place of the circus where it took place, it's on the margin of the town. And the other one was Cemetery Hill. Cemetery Hill was destroyed by the earthquake, but it was not hit by the avalanche. So people could find some refuge there. The place of former Yungay was abandoned and declared a monument. And the town was rebuilt for the people to live in a place nearby. But the question remains, will it happen again? Claro, el pensamiento a veces digo, si hay un terremoto, un fuerte movimiento, se puede venir. Y ahora pues ni siquiera hay casas, todo es una pampa, pocos eucaliptos. Uy, llegará por menos de un minuto, en segundos desapareceremos. Es que ojalá Dios que nos ampare, ¿no?